Hi everyone, I am in my sewing room today. We've got a snap in the air of fall. It's kind of cool. I got a jacket on and I'm having a blast. I am going to be trimming up the scrappy basic squares for my flying geese to make my stars. I've got them all kind of in process. I love stars. I constantly have scrappy stars going and um, these just happen to be ones that will be going in class next week. So we've got quite a few of them to make. So I've got a stack and here I go. Hi, Carolyn. All right, so here's my basic squares. I've got some um, different backgrounds in the center, but they're all gonna jive together um, without too much of a difference. So my basic squares, and then, of course, I trim a two-step and a fourth, cut them in half, sew them on my star, put my edges on, and I'm ready to roll. Now, it's really easy to decide um, which colors you want in a certain spot because wherever you leave the fourth of an inch, those two colors stay married. They do not separate. Wherever you two-step, those are the ones that will separate. So I didn't have to worry. I didn't want the two blues or the two darks to be together on that one. So I did a two-step because they separate and then they can go in different stars or not show up together. So these are both kind of dark and these are both kind of medium. So I want um, a dark and a medium together, dark and a medium together. So my fourth of an inch will be here and here. So that means the 90 goes on and I trim leaving my fourth of an inch and I turn and do the same thing. Now I was helping someone on the text thread just this morning and she was talking about losing her points here on her star. And um, you know when you're doing the trimming in of the basic square, you know if all of this is going to be correct and where you want. So let's just... Um, look at that. So I'm using the grid line here on the edge where I've already cut. And of course, my fourth of an inch will be there. My line is going through the center. When all of that lines up, then you know that these are going to be good and you won't lose your points when you add your other seams to make your star. So go from the edge of your ruler in and you can tell it's one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four. And for these six inch stars, that's what it should be. And I love mini using the mini ruler because to me, it's just very simple and it's um, easy to see and uh, maneuver. Now on these next two sides, I have to go right up to the tip. And so I went to the left to do my two step and you can see here and here how the lines are lining up. So that means that everything is staying with good 90s, it's staying true to size and all of your angles will be where they're supposed to be. Now, when you're doing your trimming, um, you know, that's the important part to keep your um, units the, the correct size. And it's easy to do by looking at your lines, by knowing what you're supposed to be looking at and watching them, I know that everything is gonna be true and nice and neat. So after I do this, then I just have to make sure because these, when you when you are squaring them up as you go, they're correct size and all the points where they're supposed to be, they're gonna fit on your square. And uh, when you come in here and sew this fourth of an inch, you're gonna get that nice point right there. So the next step would be to make sure that your fourth of an inch is great because that's what creates the corner of your star like you see right here. So I'll check and see if I have any questions. Got some watching early this morning. No questions. If you have any questions, let me know. And then just come in here and cut it in half. Now, on some of these, I will leave them as a whole piece, meaning I will not cut them in half like this. And those are the ones that you use to create your, your sides or your edges. 
So see how you want this to go on like that. And I want to sew these corners on um, as soon as I can so that I can get um, some more accuracy. So that means I'm just going to put my strip down and these that I have trimmed up, the two-step edge, I will just sew it right on my strip just like this. And this seam coming through here, if this is a nice sharp point, when you sew that fourth of an inch, it actually leaves a half an inch right here. So that means you're gonna have that fourth of an inch here and here when you get it all um, trimmed up the way that it should be. And of course you would load one on your strip and then just load the other. And make sure when you go through here that you've got um, a nice seam allowance so that when you open it up, um, it'll be a half an inch. And you can measure it right then and know if it's gonna be good. You don't have to wait till you get to this step or try to start sewing it on your star and think, oh, something's not working. Check, part of the science of patchwork is knowing what to look for in each step along the way and making sure that it's, it's happening because that's where the human element is, is in the cutting, the sewing, and the pressing. So if you watch as you go with everything, then you know before you move on to the next step if your work is passable, if it's something you can deal with, or if it's something that you need to go back in and change. And it's much easier to change it at that step, like nip it in the bud right there, instead of letting the problem progress. Because if you don't, that problem is just gonna get bigger, bigger, bigger as you go along. So when I'm cutting and I have a lot to cut, I like to just kind of space them out on my cutting board and just kind of repetit repetitively just go through and, and do it. So I'm gonna look at all of them and since I'm right-handed, I'm gonna start with the 90 and I'm gonna make sure the right side of my block is where I want that 90 to be. Um, like on this one here, I want this to be my 90 because um, I want this to be my 90 because of my colors and how I'm thinking about my colors. Because remember, wherever the 90 is at, those two stay together. So I want these two to stay together. And I want these two to stay together and, and so on. So now I'll just come in here and I'll just do my 90 on my right sides and just kind of hop from one to the other. And of course, I'm making sure it's nice in the tip, down the seam and through the middle. Trying to decide on that one. Yeah. Well, I don't want both of that brown and gold together. Sometimes I'm picky and I pay attention um, in a scrap. Um, and sometimes I'm not. It, you know, when the whole quilt gets put together, those two half square triangles uh, or that those two colors on that fine goose, no one's going to pick those out and say, oh, I wonder why she put those two together. And then when I'm doing this, it kind of helps me stay in sync. And especially when you're doing um, a flying goose because you leave a fourth and you two-step and it's easy to get um, off in your own little world when you're trimming and then get it trimmed wrong. Now also when I'm doing this step, I'll go back to this one because I think you can see this one pretty good. As I'm trimming this second one, I look over here and I see if it's lining up nice. I also know if it's the correct, it should be three and a half because that's being sewn here and this is a three and a half, so I know what that is. So edge one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three. Oops, it's four. Uh, with the, okay, the other one is the three and a half. This one is the four. So here's one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four. So you know with each step if everything is the way that it's supposed to be. So now I'm 
two-stepping it. I have it right in the corner. My grid line's going through. It's squaring up nice where I've already cut. And so I can just keep moving right along. with all of my pieces. Now these I'm gonna leave in the, um, um, the hole. I'm not gonna cut them in half yet until I know how many I have cut in half and how many I have whole because I need half cut in half and I need half um, whole to do on the strip. So you can see here how I have a stack that's not cut in half yet. I can always come back and cut them in half if I need to, but I know I need quite a few sewn on that strip And we're going to go to the sewing machine next. Now this one I can tell because this one is your um, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half. This is the two step side. It's three and a half and it's past that line. So I know it's a little big. So I'm bringing it in just a little bit so that I can get it right at that tip because it needs to go down in size a little bit. And then I'm going to come back and um, check this side and just trim just a hair bit more off. And so that's how you can check your sizing to make sure it's the way that you want it to. Now I'm going to go over with my strip and I'm going to sew these along the side and then we'll come back and trim them and cut them in half and we'll have the other half to our star. And we need to do it on both sides. So this is what it will look like. And see, here's that half an inch right here so that you have a fourth of an inch off of each one. So that's why we leave it in a whole shape and then sew it on the strip. We'll do that next. So if you'll bear with me, I'll move you over. And I kind of just have um, a um, multiple steps going over at my machine. What size are your uh, flying geese once separated? They um, have to fit on this. Um, these are the ones for the, the semester quilt. This is three and a half inches here. So they have to be three and a half this way. Um, and then they're two inches this way. So this corner square that I put on, I overcut it at two and a fourth for my strip because I like having that little extra hanging off like you see right there. And let's see if I have some more questions. Um, there are three inch centers, so you can always go to the charts in the book and see what they are. Yes, two by three and a half. Are these trim offs worth keeping? No, not really. These are pretty small and they're already scraps. So I feel like I've already recycled them. As you can see, I have a lot of stuff around my sewing machine because <laughs> I have lots of different steps. Uh, these are scraps for my basic squares and these are just my little trim offs as I go. Um, usually when I have to change the bobbin, then it's time to, to clean up and organize a little bit. So here's my strip I put in the machine. And then here's my basic squares trimmed up for fine geese. And so these two steps are where I need to sew. So if they're all stacked up correctly and I flip them over, then you can just come over. That little hook on my machine doesn't hold my thread like it should. I just never 
have to take my machines in, so. Okay, so right here, when you're going through this two-step, that's where it's important to make sure that your seam allowance width is good. And when you get ready to press them and trim them open, if you don't have a half an inch in there, then um, you're not gonna have enough on your points. So if you, if you needed to test, just sew a couple and then cut them apart and press and see what you've got. And then you know if you're sewing um, accurately or not. And um, anytime I'm doing these corner strips like this, I have to remind myself to put a bigger space in there. Don't do them as close as you do your basic squares. So I like to sit and sew for about 20 minutes and then get up and press. And so it's, you know, my work is always in a constant flow or circle. Um, with having different parts and pieces ready to go. Now I'll need to sew on the other side of these, but um, oh, not quite enough for that one then. But um, this side is a little shorter this side's a little longer, so I could use it um, and sew on this side of it, but I can't do it in this process. I have to wait till it's uh, done. So if I'm not gonna sew all the way through to the end, then I just do a little U-turn and put my scrap in. Now I can leave this in the machine and come back and catch it, um, take all of that apart and press it later, which is what I normally do. If I had another strip, I would keep going with that. I don't have another strip here, but I do have um, some of these little flying geese that need to be sewn to the side of the center of the star. So that square, that three and a half inch square that goes in the middle. Now, if they're just a hair bit big, I will center it and leave just a little bit on each side. A couple of threads because when I press it and go back to the cutting table, I can trim that up. And I'll give you another little tip on that. So this one already has one side on and um, pressed. So this is kind of just a in my sewing room. It's how I sew. It's um, just the process that I work through. We have a lot of stars in our next class. And some of the uh, large flying geese. We have four blocks to make in our next class. And I want you to be able to start setting them together for the center. So that means we're gonna make some of the large flying geese too. And since we, they'll be the same size as the large flying geese that we had in our second class, I always think about, okay, do I have them make all of them now? Or do I have them make them as we move and work through the process of the quilt? And, I, you know, for people who are doing um, scrappy or they want more freedom for creativity, I think it's best to um, have them in separate. So these are ready to press. No more sewing with these. They look like this. So I start setting them to the side because I don't need them again at the sewing machine until I get the other side on. Now, if you guys have not ordered these little seam rippers, um, the ones that we have are the ones that have more of a little hook or a little claw or like a little um, talon on it. This one's kind of straight and I do like the hook ones best. We have been out of those and we're waiting on our order to come. And as soon uh, as it does, we'll get those shipped out. Some people are on a, on a wait for them, but I really, really love it really love them. Okay, so here's the other side of that strip. 
And so I can sew, um, this side is longer, so I can put one of these on this side of it. And then see, there's plenty when you get ready to square it up. I try to work through my scraps and process them so that I don't have just that one little piece of fabric hanging around. If I can incorporate it somehow, um, then I want to do that. Now, these are my um, pieces that need the other side, and I don't have that little strip cut yet, so I'm just going to neatly fan fold these, get them out of my way, and set them aside until I get my other when I go back to cut stuff, then I'll cut another one for that. Okay, and these are ready to press. These are ready to press. So I just kind of let stuff go to the back of my machine till it gets kind of um, busy. And these need the other fine goose on them. I do kind of audition them a little bit, um, the colors, but I don't go crazy with it. You see that has two greens. I don't want that, but that would work. I don't mind two greens if they're different um, textures or colors. So I got a couple of them here. Let's see what works. Well, see that one definitely won't because it's um, the same. So we'll move to the iron here in a minute. And I usually try to keep my work moving like this. I don't, um, I don't just sit here at the machine forever. I like to just kind of work through. Let's see what these are. Okay, so these need the other side on them. So I'll set them aside. Now, I haven't been sitting here very long, so I do have a little stack of basic squares right here that I need to finish. So I just kind of line some of them out. And these are all similar in the fact that they have red at the top. So I do, I don't know why, I guess OCD, turn them so that the red is at the top. And then I have some little pre, not little pre-cuts, but little strips I've already cut. And see how these are the same and I'm just putting them on different on different pieces. Okay, so now we'll go in and sew side three on. And if I feel like I can get them lined up good, like this and do a couple, um, two or three depending on my workspace that I have at that moment. Then I can just kind of feed them through really quick. Now also notice how I keep my fingers here on the seams. I do that for a couple of reasons because from seam to seam is what's gonna show up in the quilt. What's on this side of the seam or this side of the seam is not really gonna show up in the quilt of anything. So I don't have to worry about what's happening. I wanna make sure that my, my short strip is nicely along the edge of that square. And I wanna make sure that these seams stay put and don't get twisted under my machine. See how this one is going towards the feed dogs? So as it gets in here, bump, 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 and I'm sewing, those feed dogs could want to, to twist them or turn them down. And so I keep my finger right here because that helps keep that flat underneath. And I keep my other one here and it keeps, it keeps everything organized. It keeps the strips behaving. It keeps my edge here nice and neat. And is, I'm just gonna have better results. 
And I know when I'm sewing that from finger to finger needs to be as good as possible. So it makes me pay attention a little bit better. Now I've got quite a few coming off the back of my machine. So I just come around to, I don't grab all of it and bring it and then sort through what I have. I just go back and grab the one that was left and then I can decide what to do. So he needs to go back with those other ones that need a side too. And these are all ready to press for the next step. This one needs the other side. So I haven't been sitting here very long and this is all the basic squares I have left. So I'm just gonna go ahead and sew the other side. And notice how I always have something in the machine. I don't ever leave it um, empty. So I'll look over here and see if there's anything I wanna use that I haven't used. This is just a stack of strips. Now see how this was a strip that was wider and it was had just a little bit left at the end, which will happen, you know, when you're using basic squares. So this is, is nice and long, and it will cover the side of that, that basic square. So there it goes. So you can use every little scrap of fabric. It's just knowing how and when you can do that. Now, if I do use this one, it'll give, uh, since all of these have red, but remember when I trim it up, I can make it different. Now, as I'm looking at this one, I've got gold and red, so it's okay to go on there, but I'm definitely going to have to trim that one so that I can get a red and gold on one and on the other. So, I could... See that one? I can use that one. I can use a black and um, I can come in here and use a blue. See how big this one is? You know, I could, I could trim it so that I can maybe get two out of there if it's four inches. No, it, it's not enough for these that I'm doing, but um, it's already recycled at least one time. So as long as I can, you know, use my fabric original, take those scraps and use them. I feel like I've processed it two times. I used to have a rule to where I had to process every little piece of fabric three times. Just keep working with the scrap, working with the scrap. So it just kind of depends on what I'm making and how big of a piece is left and that sort of thing, whether But these, um, you know, the shorter that you make them, they have to cover the square. So if our square is three inches, they have to be three inches. But if I make them a perfect three inches, then I have to take the time to make sure that they're on here perfectly. So that's why I make them just a little bit larger, not more than three and a half, because whatever's on this side of the seam or this side of the seam is that little part that you trim off. So these trim off pretty little. So unless I had a project in mind that I was gonna use a little tiny piece like that, I wouldn't um, save it over in my trimming. Now I do have one up here, remember he was in the machine. So he needs to be done. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up these little basic squares. Put them in my press stack and then um, I'm going to come back over here and grab red check. Can never go wrong with your red and black check.
Now I'm gonna come over here and grab a little scrap. Now I usually like to have at least two pieces of fabric together. It just feeds through the machine better. And so that's what my little pile is over there. I never leave my machine empty. So now we're ready to go and press. I'll check and see if we have any questions and I'll bring you along with me. So I have my, um, This is from my, um, I'll go ahead and show you this. Um, these are two pieces that I have put together. It's my block from the last class. And um, I have got some flying geese here on one of the sides. And I've got my little clips, um, kind of pros and cons on actually sewing with these. I think these are great when you're holding something like you're binding, when you're putting binding on. But I don't know that I love the clips for right here at the machine with uh, piecing. Um, I'm just not quite sure about that. I think they're good when you're just trying to keep things together and organized. And especially for the binding because you don't uh, poke yourself and it does hold them tight. Now I am going to put a scrap in because I want to sew the other side. You can see how I have it ready, ready to roll. So we will go to the iron here in just a minute, but this was on the back of my table and I kept forgetting about it. So we're just going to do it. Now I did say in class that I was going to put the churn dash in the middle of mine. But I had this green star already made up and it was just kind of laying there with it. And I was like, oh my goodness, that is so pretty. It looks like I did it um, specifically. I did not, but I'm gonna run with it. The clips do add weight and so it does kind of pull around. I know these are big pieces I'm working with. And so they're going to have more weight, but now I noticed on the other side, um, in that first little section that I was sewing that, um, I was concerned about my underneath piece being out far enough and there being enough in the seam. So I am going to go back and check that here in just a moment. So as you're sewing, part of this perfection and this science of patchwork is just, you know, checking everything as you go. Don't just blindly jump in and start going and not thinking about what you're doing, where you're going, how you're going to get there. And I definitely do like um, these seams pressed open. It's just really nice when you actually get, get to the sewing machine. And I think the next step on this one when we press, that it also helps uh, with the pressing. Okay, now... So this side here was where I started on this other one. So I want to look on this side 
and all is good. And so I want to look on the back and make sure I have enough fabric in my seam everywhere. I don't want to wait till I get to the quilter and stretch my quilt out. And then I realize that I have seams popping and a seam that doesn't have enough seam allowance because then you have a much bigger problem. All right, so I'm gonna take this out so we can press it. Got my scrap in the machine. Let's go see what we got. And since I'm doing this all by myself today, um, I have to move my camera. Okay, so I'm gonna back up and look at questions. I started my stars yesterday from Pamela. I was waiting to see more of where you were going and choosing my colors. Would you one day do a short class on how you use graph paper and sizing a block? That would be good, Pamela. Um, this would be designing a block. I like the wonder clips. I like these little previews. Yeah, this is what I call in my sewing room. Yeah, I just learned another little trick. I love these short videos, always helpful. Thanks, Jody. Laura, tell us what you picked out and what you um, learned. Okay, so now I'm bringing you over to the pressing. See all those pieces laying out on the floor everywhere in my whole sewing room. Okay, let's see what we got going. Laura, tell us what little tip or hint or trick um, you had. So here's my stack of basic squares all cut apart and stacked up and see how I just lay it down and go back. And you can build on top of each other. I hope you guys have watched the basic square videos um, because this is really where your speed is, is right here. Your speed and accuracy is all right here in this basic square. Okay, so those are ready to trim. And see how those are wider than what obviously was needed, but you just trim off what you don't need and it already was a scrap. So you don't have to take the time to recut it unless you can definitely get two out of it. Now here's another one where I, um, my strip had an angle on it and this way was um, not as comfortable to work with as the, the long way, see? So when I sewed it on, I just made sure the long side was there because when I come in here to trim, I go this way. So this short side here, definitely not a problem. Now, somebody was asking in class, how do you keep your stuff from stretching? Notice here well, while I'm pressing, how I'm working with and holding my fabric. See my fingers where the pressure is. I'm not along the edge. I'm in here where the seams are and in the middle. And then that way when I, uh, I'm gonna say tug on the fabric to make sure that it's smooth and flat, I'm not pulling on the edges. Now, if any of these need to uh, be trimmed up along the edges, we'll do that. I talked about how you can center that flying goose if it's just a little bit big um, so that you have a few threads over here and a few threads over here. Even though our points are not matching up with anything in the center, you still want your points to be in the center and to look neat and um, neat and organized. But on some blocks, like if we were doing an option one in the middle, then you definitely, you know, want to make sure that those points are in the center. So you can hit it with just a little um, hit of heat uh, before you flip it. Remember, I've always talked about in the videos that it's you warm it up before you ask it to flip. That way it will behave better and you, uh, you know, like if you were really a gymnast, you could get hurt if you start flipping and you have it warmed up. And remember our fabric was a living thing. It has movement and um, muscle memory to it. So treat it nice. 
and it will treat you nice. And see how I, uh, since I'm pressing on top of the stack, it, I just, it just keeps pressing, pressing, pressing. So give it a little hit, then flip it. And see, I'm holding inside, so I'm not putting any stress uh, on the fibers of the fabric, I'm asking them to, to do something that's not natural for them. Okay, so these are ready to go in and check the sides to make sure that they're all trimmed up nice and neat, and then we're ready to put the other side on. So I'll, once again, I'll check questions and move you guys around to the next. Okay, let's see. Um, um, I have flying geese everywhere. Yes, I do. I have a large gaggle of geese in my sewing room right now. Laura says the little trick was putting your finger on the seam as you're sewing pieces so they don't twist. Yes, excellent tip. Uh, let me know what else you guys are learning. And I'll just give you a quick peek over here. So a little bit of my scrap organization and then my piece is here. Since I have two large quilts going, um, there's a lot of pieces everywhere. You guys can see some of my little goodies. Okay. Let's come back over here and let's see what we got going on. Be sure to ask questions, make comments, and let us know what you're learning, just like Laura did, or what you want, like Pamela, um, then we can, can help better. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is trim these up and get them in my stack of stars that are ready to roll. And like I said earlier, I like to just kind of mass produce So I'll just lay them out. Now, what I'm looking for here is I want to make sure that um, I'm checking my size of my three and a half width. I'm also making sure that my seam or my angle or my fabric goes, that line is just exactly right in the tip. And if I have any extras here, and usually it's just, you know, it's just like little shavings here that I trim off. Sometimes nothing comes off but I want the back of my, my quilts to look nice and neat. I want my blocks to look smooth and cared for. If the back looks nice, then you know that um, the front's gonna be good too. So once again, my mini, I love it. And I'm just putting it along the edge. And um, even if it doesn't look like there's anything there, there was really nothing there on that one. You can tell when your rotary cutter goes and see how you can check that width of three and a half. You can tell when it goes through the any fabric if it's, um, if it's really cutting anything off or not. And this one, I am trimming it just a little bit more because that red tip wasn't quite as sharp as I wanted. And there was a little bit. So see when you see this one, there's gonna be just a little bit of it except down here at the bottom. But you can check the width to make sure that you're at three and a half. And you can check these corners to make sure that they're sharp. Because as we go, you know, this is a science of patchwork. This is like looking for your um, looking for you know any anything that's not going to be producing good work.
you know, you have to pick up your ruler, pick up your rotary cutter every time. So if you already have, one, two, three, four, I've got like six laid out, depending on how much workspace you have. If you already have your pieces laid out, then you can just move from one to the other and it helps go, it helps to make it go a little faster. Now also, if you're just doing a few at a time, if for some reason you find a mistake, or you've made a mistake, you haven't done it on all of them, you've just done it on a few. Remember, sew a little, cut a little, sew a little, cut a little. So you can see how there's just tiny little um, shavings that we have um, off. And um, you can do lots of things to help get that cleaned up. But there's also like little thread, uh, like little scratch pads like you use in the kitchen. They work well. So our block has five of these in each one. So I'm going to put them in stacks of five. So here's three, four, five. Here's after I get started going on them. One, two, three, four, five. Here's another stack. Here's one, two, three, four, five. So there's, um, so I need four blocks. So there's one, two, three, and let's see if we have five. One, two, three, four, five. So this is all that I need for class and what we're gonna be doing in our next one. And here's a starter piece <laughs> for our next one. So now what we want to do is um, you have to either sew these on your strip, or if you already have some done, then you just come in and sew those on the side. Now, some of these I was not as happy with. These were from a previous project. And um, some of these, I don't know that I sewed my seam the best. And this one I'm pretty sure is gonna fit just fine. But sometimes you've gone through and you've made all your flying geese and you've checked all your sizes everywhere. But then see how this one's lining up? See, this one is quite a bit off. So, you know, I don't wanna, that's too much to work in. I don't want that one. I know all of these are good. So when I put this one on here, I know he's the culprit. I know he's the troublemaker. And so I have to decide, well, it's scrappy. Do I want to use him or do I not? See, all of these are a little bit big. So maybe maybe these squares were a little bit big for my basic. That one I can get to work. Um, but I don't want them to uh, pucker when they're too big. Yeah, see, that's a lot. So these apparently must go to a different size of star because that's just too much off. And when I come back over and check my seams, there's nothing wrong there. So that one will work. But these other ones here are just a little bit big. So if it's more than an eight, if it's an eight, you know, eighth of an inch or smaller, you can get it to work. If it's an eighth of an inch uh, or larger, you know, if it's more than an eighth of an inch, these are more than an eighth of an inch, then something's wrong somewhere. Uh, and if it's just an eighth of an inch or smaller, then you can get it to work. But anything else from that? Okay, now see, this one's kind of one of those. See, this one was one that was bigger. So I got it to match up pretty good here and here. But this outside edge can stretch because of the bias. And so if it's smaller here and it's bigger here, then it is just going to pull out and not be good. So this one I need to take off um, because it was too big. I made it work. And I maybe, maybe it was satisfactory here, but what's going to happen here? It's causing another issue, another problem. So that's why I'm like, Find out as soon as you can what is, you know, that everything is fitting and working the way it should be and correct. And then don't move forward. Really think about your work, where you're at, you know, be, be a detective and figure out what's going wrong. See, these, these all fit up nice. 
so I didn't have to force anything on any of them. And the outside edges are much nicer because, you know, this all this extra has to come out somewhere. It'll come out here. It's just, when you think about it, think about if you are putting on Spanx or a girl, it may be smoothing out this part, but the excess has to go somewhere. Is it going to bubble out over the top of your Spanx or your girdle? Is it going to bubble out over here over the top? And be an issue so you know um, that's kind of funny to think about but that and that excess whether it's at the top of your spanks or at the outside edge of your block it's got to go somewhere okay I'm gonna check some questions um, uh, I like a controlled scrappy let's see um, I like um, start making. I'll start making some of the large geese so I can use the trim offs on the smaller ones. You know, Pamela, that right there is very smart and very good because those large ones do have a nice trim off that you can use. I like a controlled scrappy quilt. I do too. They're probably my favorites because um, there's just so. It's just like food with a lot of flavor. Scrappy quilts have lots of different fabrics in them, and if they're put in there. To where they're pleasing to the eye and you can keep the pattern in control it's just like food with a lot of good flavor i had a few of those yesterday that didn't quite line up yeah so go back and check um a lot of times um a lot of times it has to do with this seam um that would be the first you know if you've checked everything as you've gone and they're the size that they should be then it has to be in this seam right here you know is your seam good when you go through here because you need a fourth of an inch and a fourth that's a half so you can open it up before you cut them in half and you can measure to make sure that it's going to be correct so i have those two ready to go um these need sides these need sides i don't have enough sides made because these that i was using That's a three, so that will work. So those I have, but I need to get another strip cut so I can sew the other side of those. So if you if you want uh, um, if you want to hang on just a minute, I'm going to cut my strip and then I'll go back to the sewing machine. Okay, so this was in my, my stack, and it's one of the ones I'm using. And see how these are just like in the bolts um, uh, when we cut our yardage. Now, if I was doing, since I'm just doing a strip for my corner square, I don't necessarily have to make sure that it's pressed out really nice. But um, if it was going anywhere else, then I would. So I'm making sure that it's lined up nice and neat there, and then it comes out. And then notice how I'm putting my skinnier part on top so that I can tell where I'm at. So I'm making sure there's not a little pucker or edge down there. I have my grande. And I'm gonna trim up this edge and um, I'm actually going to flip it because I want to use this edge down here and put a grid line on it to help keep it square. And then I will look at my white selvage edge there and make sure. I'll push it as far to the edge as I can. And these need to be two, so I'm going to overcut at two and a fourth. Remember, I don't ever like the edge of my ruler to be right at the edge of the fabric at the top or the bottom. That wears those corners, and you also don't get a good cut with your fabric. So, and this one doesn't have to be perfect because I'm overcutting it anyway, and it is a... Um, corner strips so so there's one I don't like my fabric to move after I've cut it but once again it's just strips so I'll be okay 
Now, anytime I have these that are on the edge of a piece of fabric and they're not really big enough to do much with, this one is a shortest is a one. So that means that it would sew down to a half. So I have a special basket that these go in that are like one and a fourth inches and smaller. And then there are several scrap projects that I will use these in that I wanna show you guys and maybe some of that will be Quilt Club Week next year. So that goes in a basket so that it stays nice and organized. Okay, let's see if we have any more questions. Nope, okay. Let's go back to the sewing machine. Lisa, hi Lisa. Lisa texted me yesterday and she is in Fredericksburg, Texas where my sister is, one of my many sisters. And that sister has the pie shop. And so Lisa got pie this morning and she got to see my sister, one of them. Okay, strip in the machine. Leave the selvage on it, start it. And actually, if you leave the selvages on like this to start it, you're actually saving the good fabric because you have to start your strip. So you're gonna have anywhere from a four eighth of an inch to a half an inch up there anyway. So it might as well be the selvage so that when you start putting your fabric on, it's actually put on the good part that you're gonna save. Okay, so this is basically just like the basic square. You have a square in the middle and you're sewing strips on. With flying geese, they turn into a little bit of a rectangle. Make sure when you go through that two-step area that your seam is not too skinny. Now, notice too here how I'm holding my fabric. Notice how I'm not pulling along this edge, even though this is the edge I'm trying to line up. I'm down here where the multiple fabrics are and where the seams are, because that's the strongest part here where all these seams cross over and come together. So I'm actually holding it like this and lining it up on my, on my strip. Now it's nice when you're sewing these, whether it's basic squares or these, that everything is smooth when you're getting it on. But if it does get kind of jostled a little bit, meaning that this one's pushed up or pulled down and the strips kind of um, have um, ripples in them, because you're cutting them apart, you'll be okay. But like when this one comes in, you wanna make sure that And notice how I'm using more of my whole hand and I'm working over here on the seam. I don't handle these raw edges. Now, I do have some left on my strip, and I've got some over here trimmed. So I see how this has both sides on, but there's no reason why I can't just keep sewing and putting these on. Now, even now where I, when I'm handling them, notice I'm handling or picking them up where the seams are, I'm holding them in the middle. This one needs a little bit better of a press. So, like I said, as soon as you see a problem, stop. Don't keep working with it until you figure out what's wrong with it and can fix it. Okay, let's see if we can get one more on here. 
Um, it's going to go down into the selvage too much. So just have one more plus this problem. So we're just going to stop there with him. And I'm just going to put my, I'm going to make a U-turn. See, there was no reason to keep sewing through the strip. I was done, so stop. Just put your, your scrap in. So I'm going to trim this one off and set him aside. These uh, on the long strip, I'm going to leave them together. This one here. Can come off. Notice how I didn't worry about the other side. I just kept cutting. These need the other side on. These are ready to be pressed. Now, um, I have these bigger scissors at my machine here lately. I used to always just work with my five inch, um, but I've had so many big pieces with this quilt. I have used these big ones at my machine and I have them over on my pressing board. Okay, now this is where you start and stop. I do think when you press, it's a little bit better to not have so much on the end. Okay, these are ready to press. These are ready to press. These need the other side. And I do have a strip. That one needs pressed. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this while I'm, since I have the strip. So see, once again, there's my selvage. I start it in the machine and work to the edge of the selvage. Now here's that little lone orphan one. And here are the other ones on the strip. Going a little fast on that one and my edge got flipped up so pay attention to that now notice how i'm working with these this is how i do the basic square see how this hand is underneath on the strip and it's holding it smooth and um just taut, not pulling or anything. And then see how this hand is sometimes underneath or on top moving things around like this. Okay, now I know, whoops, I was gonna say I know it's my last one, but it's not, I got one more. Okay, so I know this is my last one, so I'm gonna put it on. And I'm going to sew to about three-fourths. And I'm going to stop before everything is under the needle and it makes it cumbersome. I have no more to put on. Um, and so I would cut it and then put my strip in and take everything out. But remember, I had a few. So there's my... I had a few there at the end that just have side one and I still have quite a bit of strip so I might as well come over here and cut these apart ready for the iron but it's just that one so I thought I had more than one Now, he doesn't need to go to the iron, um, but so he could stay in the machine and be in the next rotation because he's not ready to press, but I am going to take him out. Now, let's see if that one little piece I had right here, remember it didn't quite fit in on there. Let me see if I can do it now. Nope. But he is large enough that I can do one corner with him. I can't get two corners. See how we get two corners with it? And see, it's not 
quite long enough with that selvage. If I had to, I would, but I don't have to. So I'll wait and I can be able to get one out of him somewhere down the road. So this is all of these that I need. I don't have to do any more, so I don't want just one hanging around. So once again, before I get too close and it makes it too cumbersome, I trim that off because I don't need any more of that strip. Okay, so this is our little um, press stack. And here we are with some of our, we've got a few of these that are ready to go on. So let's just, like I said, I'm here. Let's go ahead and work through the process of these. So blue, blue, red, red, I don't really like that. Let's go to another one. That one works there. That's why I like to have several to work with, is that way if I want to be picky about my colors, then I can't. So I'm matching my seams up. I'm feeling with my fingers that it's smooth, that it's, you know, that they lock together. And this is overcut, so it hangs out over the edge. So another thing about this overcut that helps is, is that, see this point that's under there? So you've got a seam under there that's coming to you so those feed dogs are going to be okay pushing that to you but all of that right up here in the corner can make your machine kind of be a problem in all of this so if you have a little bit of fabric like this on the overcut starting it just makes this part that's underneath go so much smoother it's like it tricks your machine into everything being smooth and you don't have to worry about now when you get to the end it's make sure that you sew nice you don't want it to veer off because this seam right here is what's going to create that point and that seam allowance okay so this one's different different colors and all different, so I like him. So the edge of that was kind of pressed and curled up a little bit for some reason. You probably saw me straighten it up and then I just kind of slid it in so that it wouldn't um, get wrinkled up. I don't know those are kind of the same let's see about this one really like that one You can just kind of fuss with your colors all day if you want. If you enjoy it, do it, but it's really not going to make that much of a difference. Now I could feel, I could feel this bumpiness. I knew something was wrong. That's why I stopped and looked up and see how that got turned. Okay, so that's all of everything here. I need to make, I need these to get pressed and cut before I can do any more with those. Do you guys chain piece? Have you learned anything about chain piecing? See, see that one that was kind of curled up? Now when I go press, I can get him straightened up. 
So if you guys learned anything about chain piecing, pressing, trimming, I'll check for questions again. We'll come over here to the iron. Um, let's see what we got. Okay. Um, uh, Lisa said, I got lots of pie. Tani makes the best. She does. Their crust is three days. Her husband makes it. So they're a team at the pie shop, kind of like Steve and I are. Steve, is it possible to push this live to my TV? Thanks. Um, gosh, I don't know, Sharon. And I don't know that if he even knows I'm in my sewing room doing a live. And Sherry's here. Hey, Sherry. Okay, let's get over here and press. So you can see pieces over here. This is the scrappy quilt over here. And the organized one over there. Okay, that's a pretty good spot. Um, okay, so let's see what we got here. Here are the, it looks like a basic square, but we're gonna open it up and find out that it's not a square. It's a rectangle and it's a flying goose. So see how I kind of press over, warming those seams up, and then I just press it open, press it open. Just like the basic square. Let me know what you guys have learned today. And when I lay it down, I make sure that the left one is on top. Uh, since I'm right-handed, it just kind of see how easy it makes it to open it and because i've heated these up um, it just makes them want to lay flat and press open And my iron just kind of skates around like an ice skater. And you can just press on top. It just kind of helps reinforce that pressing on each one below. Oh, I didn't count these. I hope I don't have too many. But I will need more stars and I've got basic squares over there. And I'm all, I mean, a six inch scrappy star, shoot, you can make these for the rest of your life and never run out of places and ideas and quilts to use them. Okay, so now I will kind of stack them up. And they're ready to cut or trim. And these are one-sided stars. So I'm just going to give them a warm up. And I don't know, you know, one of them's going to have to go one way and one's going to have to go the other. So I just start with those going in. And then if these go this direction out, then see how it's going to leave this open here so that you can see those points when you sew your next seam. But because you're breaking that beak, it doesn't always want to go flat. See how it's not wanting to go flat quite like I want. So let's try our new pressing pin when we have a problem. Yep, it's still got a little bit in it. So I'm just gonna come over here and give it a little reinforcement and I'm gonna go ahead and do it to that one. and just press on top. Now I am on my wool mat, so I do have to think about uh, moisture, but um, when they're uh, on top of each other, that moisture is not going to 
go through and mess up my wrap and just a little jab, dab. Now, I showed this during Quilt Club Week, and we do have it in stock. You guys can go and order it. And there are refills and stuff for it. You get this little refill and this, and then we also have the, the pen. We also have the refills. Okay, nice perfect point there. I love that. Everything's going smooth. I think that was the one, the one net that I was. No, I'm going to rip him out. So he's fine. All right, so these just need the other side on them. Already taken shape. When you get three sides on your star, you can already see the, the beauty of it coming out. Now, I have this one that I sewed the geese to. And um, let's see how we're going to press it. Sharon says, I love the live in your sewing room. I understand. Thought Steve might be with you. No, I'm just up here with my phone. And you wouldn't believe how I've got it. <laughs> uh, in a quilt. It's, my phone is actually in a quilt so that I can move it around and show you guys So, um, what we're doing. <laughs> okay, so here's my crown block. Now, someone said in one of the videos the other day, how do you handle your stuff? Now, this is one of them that we're going to talk about handling. And uh, because it's getting big, we got lots of pieces, we've got bias edges. So see how I have it uh, folded up when I carry it? I, I have it all folded up like this. So, and then when I handle it, see how I always am inside. I'm never along the edges pulling and pushing. And um, we're gonna have to do, this is the seam that I had. See these flying geese, we got those all opened up. And so just kind of fold and handle your pieces and handle inside, not along the edges. So the first thing I want to do is heat these seams up. Notice if I'm pulling, I'm at a seam. And I hate to use the word pull because I'm not really pulling, I'm straightening. And we're going to heat that, heat that up really good. And see how I'm, I'm kind of hopping, I'm not just like that down the side. I'm just hopping. Okay, so now I'm ready to come in here and hold it. Notice how I'm holding it and I'm ready to see now what do I want to do? Well, these are open spaces. All of this is seams. So I'm going to go to the open space. Notice again, I'm inside my block. I just gently uh, smooth the fabric out right here. And I'm working with this big iron right now. I My little row in, it's not a huge iron. Um, it's a silhouette. Um, my little row into had an accident and so I don't have it right now. I am. Uh, cautioned my grandkids when they're up here sewing with me about the iron and about the row into not pushing here but keeping your hand back here but that was a seamstress I thought maybe or I just kind of forgot I guess to caution and broke my handle so there is a place in Colorado that will fix your handle on your travel iron of your row into if you happen to break the handle on it. Okay, so now while it's still hot, I wanna come back this direction and I wanna see what's happening over here. Make sure that I got my star points where I want. And those are a little bulky. I'm gonna to have to go back and work on them a little bit, but all my geese are good. Now notice this doesn't need pressed. I'm not going on out. I'm not gonna work it, it's fine. I don't have to work it. They're already pressed. I don't have to worry about it. Okay, so now, same thing. Heat it up, heat it up, heat it up. Now, I may have to go back in and um, open that one to get my points the way I want it. 
because um, they were, and notice I start in the middle. Hand goes under. Now this one, I am pressing the seam to the geese and it seems to be wanting to lay flat better. So I may go back and do that. But remember, it's kind of like once your clothes are in the dryer, you can't go back and change it. And it's kind of like pressing your quilt. Once the, the, where you've heated a seam up, once it's cooled, it's hard to go back and re change it. Yeah, this one is much better. Um, so I'm going to hurry and get back over here and see. Yeah, that was just too much bulk. So it's taking my points. So I'm actually going to come back in here. Now notice my iron is just butted up real close to the to the seam. So I'm heating it just right up next to that seam. And you can tell when it's when it's ready to when it's heated up and it's ready to go because it will see how it's starting to go over by itself. Uh, if I just keep pushing that heat up against the edge, it's just like water pushing, 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 and pretty soon that dam will break. And uh, that seam will go on over easily the way you want. Now you can press this open. And if um, this one doesn't behave the way I want, I may go back and press it open. But see how this side was, was hot and it was ready to do that backflip. It looks like I've got a pretty wide seam here too. I may just have to go back and fix that seam for my points. That may be the problem now that I'm looking at it. Is from here to here is too wide. But I did get a better point by going back in and pressing it, but I don't like what's happening here. So um, I'm gonna go back and redo that seam, get my points in there the way I want, and then I'm gonna press so that the flying geese are flat. So I don't want it, those geese to stay back like this. So I'm gonna go ahead because they're hot because if I don't, then I may have to use starch or steam on it and I don't wanna add any moisture to my, to my fabric. Okay, so that's kind of where we're headed for our next class. And of course you've already got um, your crown block made. Look how beautiful that is. And, um, then we've got this nice open space here so that our flying geese really show up nice along the edges. You know, you have to think about a block and the beauty of it is, is that, you know, just by itself, you know, it looks one way, but then when you sew that block next to the another block just like it, what interactions happen? Um, you know, maybe you wanted to add something here in the corner or maybe you need it to be more spaced out of just plain so that the next piece has that contrast and doesn't get mucky and molded, muddled into it. Really like my green star there in the middle. I think it turned out nice. Okay, do you guys want me to keep going or have you had enough? Um, uh, very good. Okay, so we can do some trimmings here on these see that quilt in that basket that is one i'm hand quilting and it's from like 1999 it's been in three houses <laughs> it's moved with me through three houses that's how long i've had it but it is about three-fourths of a way and I only have one granddaughter. She is um, 12. So I've got a few years before she graduates, but she has quilts, um, but she does not have a hand quilted quilt. So I'm thinking about, and she loves the pastels and the pinks and everything. So I'm thinking about um, trying to have that one done in the next six years and giving it to her. 
to her for graduation. We'll see. Okay, so now we have these that we need to cut apart so that we can make these shapes that go on the other side of the star. Let me check and make sure that you guys can see well. And once again, I like to just line them up and do several all at once. And we have so many of these that we're making in this semester that you guys should really know this and get good with it by the time we're done. And really and truly, stars and what you're learning in this, um, you can just apply to so many things. Oh, so Pamela, you're wanting sneaky peeks, huh? You're wanting some sneak peeks. Well, I don't know. I got a lot of stars to make. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm using my mini. Um, I flipped it so that I had my fourth of an inch side. Not that I need it on this first outside edge, but I will need it on the others. So on this one, I'm just lining the edge of the rule up with the edge of the flying goose. And see, this is your fourth of an inch trim. So that's gonna be what is on the inside. And so you can see that fourth of an inch is that next seam. So we need that to be a nice clean edge so that it sews to the edge of your star. But now when we get here to the middle, I'm looking at this line on my ruler, it's two inches, and I'm looking at that fourth of an inch line on my tip. So see, right now at this step, I know if this is gonna be good and if it's gonna fit my star. You know, if it's, um, I know that my two inches is good, that's gonna be um, sewn here, my two inches here. I know that my fourth of an inch is gonna be good, and I've also got to look over here at these. Is there enough room for my seam allowance and my points on those. Sometimes it can be a little skinny, and if I need to, I can just scoot it over just a little bit to give those a little bit more space. So you can see how that will sew right there, just like that, how beautiful that will be. And then I flip this one, and see that's the fourth of an inch. I need this to be clean. So actually when you're working on these, um, both sides are clean, you know, both sides here and here are clean. It's this outside edge here that you'll trim up. Now, I know that this needs to be two, and so instead of lining it up perfectly right there, I scooted it over a little bit here to push it out a little bit before I cleaned it up, and then anytime I get to my sewing machine, if I know that this has a little bit more on it, I know that that is actually my measurement to sew with, not this. So, for example, when I line this up, see how that white part, that's the part I line up with the edge because I know this is the true measurement. I know this one here is just a little bit skinny. And, and so when I sew, I sew off of that black check square. That's my seam allowance, not here. If you think back to farmer's life when we did sashings, this is what we did in that sashing class when something was too small. Now, if you want to, you can come in here and cut the uh, middle first. So I've got it lined up nice in here. I know I've got my two inches. Um, I'm looking at my points. I've got enough over here. So this you really need to, you know, take time and make sure that everything is, is fitting the way you want. So if I did that middle first, then when I come over here, I can see if I have my two inch good. So I did have just a little bit of my goose that I trimmed. Okay, now this one right here, see how this one here lined up nice and this one was a little bit. So when, once again, when I put this on my piece and sew,
I line up this edge because I know it's the full size. And so that seam just won't have it all the way in, but it's just like a 16th or so. It's just a few threads, but this one here did have enough and it did line up nice and neat. So see how this one would sew like this. So don't, what I'm saying is don't do this. You know, it needs to come down. Okay. So see how this one didn't have it all the way down? That's because it maybe was too close on the strip when I did my sewing. So I didn't have any that had to come off there. So I'm kind of laying them together as I go. If I like my colors while I have them spaced out here. And then I'm stacking them up like this. See this one right here? See there's quite a bit here I'm cutting off, but there's really nothing there. And this is, you know, they, these are where the pieces are. This was one piece, this was another piece, and I could have had it too close. So we're going to trim these up and I'll check and see if we have any questions. And if you want me to keep going, I can go over to the sewing machine and start sewing these together. Um, but if you've had enough, then we can just be done. See, these lines are important so that the ruler doesn't go over. That way you know you're getting a true block. Keeping it square is what I always say. So we really have kind of shown all of the steps here in um, sewing room detail, um, except making, I guess I did make a few of the basic squares, but. So keeping these lines on here is, is good. See, not really much from the, um, from the fine goose, from the option. So we just have these four. I will check for questions in just a minute. So get them in. Let me know what you've learned. If there's something you want to see, let me know. What are you guys making for lunch today? Um, Steve loves to use the uh, bread maker 
And, you know, for those of you that don't know, Steve is a retired pharmacist, and then he went back about 20 years ago and got his pharmacy nutrition degree. So he knows how food works in your body to be medicine or what foods to take um, instead of taking medicine or prescription, uh, pharmaceutical. Uh, being a pharmacist, he knows what's on that big long list that comes in your prescription with all those side effects. And um, so for years he worked with people like that. He can work with you privately. If you have a question, you can email him about it. Um, I keep wondering someday if we'll lose him and he'll go back to the health world instead of being the IT guy for, our, for us quilters. But um, he really loves the computers and he loves working with you guys so I think like we don't have to worry about that but um, anyway so for lunch um, we made um, he made um, he loves the bread machine and he makes healthy bread so we don't have to worry about eating bread so I love that And then um, all the different uh, food and soups and all that kind of stuff we did. Okay, let me check for questions. Um, okay, let's see what you guys have said. Um, yes, please. Uh, we all want a sneak peek. <laughs> yes. Um, I just have to say that the quilts I'm seeing on Facebook, guys, whether they're pinks or blues or scrappies or black, I mean, just so many different color combos, they are all looking beautiful. The The quilt is really taking shape, and I'm very excited about it. Details on pressing are great, yes. And uh, I'm a retired nurse, and yes, nutrition is important, yeah. We are what we eat, aren't we? And unfortunately, a lot of the food out there is not what we should be eating. Is this a weekly installment for the settings quilt? Um, hi, Becky. Uh, yes, I'm working on our samples on our blocks for the next class, which I think is class five, and we have it scheduled for Saturday morning because I will be gone Monday, and I know you guys like a live class. Also, doing it on Saturday morning allows those of you who work during the week, you get to watch it live. What star is in the background? Um, Pamela, give me a little more information um, ahead of you. What star is in the background? Um, ahead of you. Uh, was it the that one over there that I was talking about for my granddaughter? Um, it's, um, it's actually star flower. Yeah, Becky, thank you. Um, if it's that one, it is the star flower block. In the corner there is pink and yellow, and it's just really muted and pastel-ish, um, so it doesn't show up like the star flower as much. Yes, Pamela says yes, yeah, that's star flower, so you can go on the website and look at the star flower pattern, and there might be some pictures of quilts on there, because we've had it kitted over the years. <coughs> Okay, let's go back over at the sewing machine. Um, I don't know, would you guys like a different view of the sewing machine? Um, I don't know that that's great. You can't really see my hands and what I'm doing. I really appreciate you guys being in my sewing room with me and spending time. Oh, and here's a table over here where I've got the fabrics I'm using for the focus print or for the focus quilt. <clears throat> Hi, Linda. Darn phone keeps interrupting this video. I'm going to go back and watch this from the beginning. <laughs> good, Linda. Good. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to start sewing in just one second, but I've got to go get a drink. Hold on.
Okay, let's see. Um, how many of these stars need to be made for this quilt? For the total quilt, Kathy, I'm not sure. Um, but we will use 20 stars for our next class. 20 stars. Yes. All right. Keep the questions coming. We got all the shipping done. That's why I'm up here sewing today. And I have time to bring you guys along with me. So everybody's order should be out. We are back ordered on a couple of notions for those of you that ordered the seam rippers or um, Missy's uh, starch is coming. Um, but the seam rippers, they haven't told us when when they will be back in stock with the distributor. Oh, these are fitting so nice. Yeah, I don't know what was wrong with some of those, but they were not fitting as nice as what I wanted. I only had, I was going through my scraps, and I had two little tiny pieces of that one, and I was like, oh, let's use it. I really like it. Okay, now this is one of those. Let's see if you can see. This right here is the width that we need. This one here was a little bit skinny, so when I trimmed these over there, I knew and so see how this one's even, this is good, but right here we needed just a little bit more. So this is the correct edge that I'll line up with my star underneath. So I'll see if I can show you. I'm gonna pin it so that I can hold it and show you. And I'll bring it up closer to the camera so that we can get a better shot. Oh, these are fitting really nice. I like these. Okay, so. I don't know, can you see any better? Um, so my square is correct. So I've got it lined up with my star underneath. My points here, my fine goose was a little bit thin. So you can see some of that star back in the back. This I know is good here. So I'm just gonna let this lay and play out and it'll get skinnier as we get to the point and then once we get here it's perfect and even the way that it should be okay linda says um um Pamela got her fabric yesterday. I watched the lives back in the days of covid and a little before. I love these. Yeah, I really enjoy doing them. Uh yes, Kathy, these are all six and a half cut. I'll have to watch Saturday's upcoming video on the replay. I'm headed to Prince George. Um, oh, Linda, yes, you've got to go. Um, when I worked quite a bit in Canada and worked with all the Janome people, and they are really, really great. When I was at Wendy's in um, Humboldt uh, during her big retreat that she has each May and June, the Janome machines were there and they were just wonderful and they do know a lot. If you, let's see, there's a girl, she's from South Africa, I can't think of her name. She might be there. If she is, tell her that Jody said hi. Um, in my sewing room videos, yes, yep. They're just so much more casual. It's just, you know, us up here doing stuff. I don't have to worried about taking up Steve's time. He always has so much uh, work to do on the computer with emails and orders and logistics of fabrics and loading stuff on the website and taking stuff down and keeping the teaching page going. And 
I don't know how we could do it without Mr. Steve. That was kind of dark, but he looks, but then I got too green, so I'll just twist him around. You guys never told me what you were having for lunch. What are you making for lunch today? Okay, this is something I've been thinking about. I have a quilt in process that I was thinking about doing for January. But there are so many quilts that are great, just as, I'm gonna say, as single block quilts, like the quilts like this one is, you know, multiple blocks and um, pieces and all that. And um, I just kind of wondered, remember back when we did the Firefly, how each week it was just a different quilt and um, we, taught how to do that block and then you just if you liked it then you just kept going with that block it's kind of like it's kind of like now that we're doing you can take each block and make a quilt with it um, like everybody's doing a lot of the star log cabins but I wondered about instead of all of it going together in one quilt would you like to do something to where each lesson is just kind of individual and stands on its own? Does that sound like fun and something a little bit different to do? Usually our fall class is kind of like what we've got going on now in Crossroads, how you um, put them all together. But our January classes, We have more. We have opportunity. We have more Mondays, so we have opportunity to do more. Do you like it when it's all one quilt that comes together, or do you like it um, just individuals? What would be fun for January? Give. Let me know. Okay, now this one, the block was quite a bit skinny. My corners were all great, but so I've got um, my red square underneath. I can see quite a bit of it over here, and that's my seam line, not the flying goose. And it still worked out with my corner just fine, so I'll have a nice corner. Once again, I like this little extra hanging off. It kind of helps the machine and the feed dogs and all that. So that everything continues to run smooth. Notice I don't pick up my foot. I just slide it under the toes. Now, another thing we're thinking about is doing um, like December after class is over, we do what I call a marathon. And in a marathon, we pick like two days, like a Saturday, Sunday, Sunday, Monday, something like that. We pick two days. We have scheduled times. So say we do two hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon, and then maybe an hour in the evening. And they're live like this. We start at the beginning of a quilt of cutting the strips and just all of the cutting and sewing process. Now this one I could tell with my fingers, there's a little bit of a separation. So I'm just gonna kind of hold it, make it the best I can. 
So when we were sewing the basic squares, I was talking about my fingers on the seams. And even now with my stars, I keep my fingers on the seams. Now, here's another one that's a little short and you know you may think oh that's you know no big deal or whatever but if your star isn't six and a half inches you know you're like okay why is my star not six and a half inches well because that flying goose was a little skinny but we can sew it we can sew it in there so it will make it the six and a half well these little stars just Keep on coming, don't they? See how that one's just a little bit big to get my seams to match up. Just a tad's okay, but you don't want it too much. Mm, but I used a lot of that green. I have to go into another batch of stars. Must have been a whole strip of green check. And we still have a little bit of that green and black check if you guys want it. And um, I actually have it on a bolt. So if you don't see the size you want, that's already cut in the inventory. Um, just email Steve and we can can cut it um, exactly what you want on that green and black check. Uh, the green star, kind of the same way. We can cut uh, what you need. And there's a little bit of the blue and black check, which I just love to pieces if you want it. And then... Um, as far as the new fabric, uh, the, the next line of fabric, not the We the People and the Celebrate, but the next line of fabric, um, it's going to all be um, checks and uh, tattered and torn basics. We kind of need some new of that. And so that's what they will be. So if you have an idea or preference of something that you want, um, I haven't done anything with it yet. So we can jump in there and do whatever we want. We are getting good at getting these one sides done. much gold 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 is a accent piece so um, to me I don't want more than one gold in each star but that one looks nice unless you're making the quilt gold and there's a lot of uh, you have organized places for gold throughout the quilt but like in scrappy gold is accent and it will jump out so you don't want too much you gotta have it I love it I like it I want some more of it but you um it'll be kind of uh, overbearing if 
if you have it in the block too much. Okay, so I have all this behind my machine. So this is where I started. That's my little scrap. So this one's done. He can go in the press. This one needs one more side. One more side. This one's done. This one's done. That one needs one more. Some of those green check or golds can fit back in some of these, I bet. Okay, I still have a few, but if there's a green check or a gold in it, then I'm gonna have to pass and move on. See, I think those could be that one I like. Okay, now on this one, I uh, this seam should be on this side, but if you noticed, I put it over that seam, and I had my finger there, and I'm just going to gently bring it down over that seam on the bottom, and it will fall down in that ditch, and I'll hold it there, and I know it's going to fit uh, perfect. It was just a tad full, just a tad of fullness in that one. Okay, this one, oh, that's not so bad with two golds. So notice how I lock those and then I put my finger on it hold it in place and then I come down here and check this one and I'm going to do that slide and lock boom there it is okay that one's got the green check but I could do a gold And the red works, so let's do it. Goodness, it's 12.30 already. Where did our day go? All right, we're gonna do one more impress. have certainly helped me pass the morning with my sewing machine.
morning. It's been fun to get to know you a little bit more. Oh, that must have the red star. Okay, so we got to come back and find another one. Nope. That one may be, although I don't know that I love those two. I guess this is it. Now, the ones that only have one side on them, I'm not going to go press them. It's kind of a waste of my time because you can press both sides at the same time. So I don't need to do it, so I'm not going to. And these need to be pressed. And... This one needs one more side. This one's ready to press. There are so many quilts I have in a stack of ideas that have drawn out that use little stars. Oh my gosh, they're in. And of course, with our new patriotic fabric, you just think of stars. So we're going to be doing some of that coming up. Okay, we're going to go press. I'll check your questions and then when we press I think we'll call it done uh, let's see um, we got any yes mix and match and balance them is correct Sarah um, grapes and chicken salad on lettuce leaves oh Becky I want to come over I love chicken salad and I love grapes and I love lettuce leaves <laughs> All right, I'll be right on over, Becky. Um, uh, having leftover chicken and wild rice soup for lunch. Well, that sounds good, too. Something I would really like to do is to learn to enlarge quilts with using the given size in the charts, but making the whole quilt block larger. For example, I would like to make Crown of Thorns quilt using diamonds using a six inch diamond. Okay, well remember Sharon that the diamond is not always easy to change sizes on. So look at that. Oh my gosh, look at that crown block with those geese on the side and those radiating stars. It's looking good. Good, good, good. Okay, let me see what else we have on here. Um, some of that, Sharon, is going to have to do with the diamond because you have to make the diamond the size you want and then make the squares match up to it. And Pamela says, how to design a large quilt from beginning to end would be a good class to incorporate in a semester. I like that. So basically, on this one and like with Crossroads, we're starting from scratch. Um, there's no picture. There's no anything. It's just in my head of a theme of what I want. This time it was starting with that six and a half inch, um, whatever you want in the middle. And then what you set it with turns it into another block. I don't really show you guys the back end of how I get there. So I'm thinking that's what you're wanting. Um, it would take um, obviously more teaching time to do that, but it's certainly, um, like I said, it's not all about the quilt and getting it finished. It's about what you learn along the way. So definitely a good idea to bring you guys more into the creativity part and the, um, the math part and the issues and stuff that come up and how we get to where we're going. So also with the base of what we've done with Farmer's Wife, with Farmer's Wife, and then, um, I don't know if it was last week or the week before, we talked about the bone structure, the main four patch, nine patch setting, um, and how you have to get where you're going. Like with the radiating star, we did get the six and a half inch star in the middle, but we had to put it together different to make it easier to do that. So I try to show as much of that along the way as I can. Um, 
that particular class, I kind of focused on that more than I did the the other steps. And then later I'm like, oh, maybe they just want step one, step two, step three, and that's it, you know, because I did get quite a few questions on things. And so I was like, well, maybe I didn't explain that well enough. Um, you know, sometimes people just want to double check with their questions and I want the people to ask no matter what. Um, because if you're wondering and you have a question, you need the answer to it no matter what. Um, but then other times, if I get a lot of questions on something, then I think, okay, I go back and think about how I taught it. What did I present? How did I do it? So that it could become more clear for people, no matter what level they are. Um, so, um, anyway, um, I'm just sitting here thinking as I'm talking out loud, um, uh, just exactly what that looks like and how we would uh, teach it. Uh, June says, oh, you're so in room, I missed it. Well, you'll be able to go back and watch, and we are going to press these here when my mind stops swirling. Uh, Sharon says she likes the marathon idea. Yeah, I think that's, I think it'll be fun. Um, I planned it. I did one of those back on New Year's Day back many years ago, and I told everybody I was going to do it, and then, bam, New Year's Day came. And I was sick as a dog. It was not fun. Um, uh, Cindy said, miss the beginning. Um, Cindy, I think it was, is Cindy, is your quilt the pink quilt that I saw on Facebook today? Oh, my goodness. When I was scrolling and that one started to pop up at the bottom of my phone, I my first thought was, wow. And I couldn't wait for it to keep scrolling up so I could see all of it. Um uh, I actually kind of backed away thinking, oh my gosh, wow, this is wonderful. You know, I wish you could have seen my reaction on it when it, when it was scrolled up. Um, Linda said, I would really like a video on the pineapple quilt. I have not found a video um, on it that is just pineapple that gives me um, to do, I've uh, done, uh, gives me the knowledge and confidence to do it like you have done on so many of your other quilts. Yes, a pineapple quilt video, please. Linda, we already have it, and I'm going to direct you to it here in just a minute. Um, there was one that started off great, and you stopped it because of a trouble with your sound. I could never find the other half you said you would post later. Okay, if you will go into the webinars and look at, I'm pretty sure it's September of 2019, but look at August, September, October of 2019, and there are two videos. Go see if you can find what you need. If you're caught up, Cindy, she said 20 for the next class. Yes, I'm sorry, I didn't answer that. Yeah, we do. We're going to do four blocks, and each block has five stars in it. Nothing else, just stars, uh, so it'll be easy, but uh, it is 20 stars. I love a gray tone on the tattered and torn. Yes, June, I was thinking about that. I'm going to do some more colors, some more neutrals with our gray. We had kind of a grayish one back in like 14. It was really pretty. I, we may go back and do that one. You'll have a yellow quilt. <laughs> it's good for me to see how you are trying on points for the scrappy look. Makes Making scrappy intimidates me. Um do i don't like becky i don't like the scrappiness where people say you just put everything in a bin and you pull it out and you use it no matter what i don't like that um i like an organized scrap so to me that just means that you have lots of different fabrics um and you still divide your fabrics up into your light medium dark and you still use the value of the color wherever and I think if you can kind of put it in your head like that. Also, Becky, go back and look at some of the older Quilt Club weeks. I do a lot of talking about scraps, how to organize your scraps, how I sorted them in size and colors and decided on the different quilts I was making. Um, go back in um, 21, 22, 23, see about some of that. Will you ever repeat color for previous lines like Pony Express? Um, I've been thinking about that. Uh, Pony Express was such an awesome um, 
fabric line. There are definitely some in the pony that I love. Let me show you what the tone on tone was for those. So this was the um, tone on tones. Can you see that? It was just like velvet. It looked like the, it looked like that old seventy wallpaper, that velvet wallpaper. But it's just cotton. But it was, this was our tone on tones, and it came in a lot of different colors. It was so pretty. I love that one. And then I would like some. Um, folds light and dark and some more browns since you were asking some I would like some folds light and dark I don't know what folds are Linda is that a a typo let me know what that is um light and dark and some more browns since you were asking yeah the browns are just so awesome those new tobaccos you know Linda you didn't get um the new shadow vintage but there was a tobacco in there Oh my gosh, that brown was wonderful. Um, repeat fabric design. Golds, not folds. Okay, Linda wants more golds. Yeah, I do too. Uh, some golds and browns. I like that idea. Um, loved your vintage line with the tiny prints and colors. Um, Cindy said, wow. Um, so Sharon... Uh, So Sharon's got time to sew today and uh, visiting with others. Yeah, it is fun. Are there any Zoom type sessions where everyone sews and chats to get to know one another? Many Zooms are done with cross stitchers. Huh, that's a good idea, Becky. I'll talk to Steve about that and see what he says. Of course, uh, you know, at retreat in April, we get to do that, but not everybody gets to come, obviously. And... Um, and even if everybody could, I don't know where we would have it. We'd have to rent out some big rooms at a ballrooms at a hotel, which we would do. But everybody has to make a decision and stick with it. Um, uh -huh. I've wondered about sowing lettuce, uh, sowing about uh, growing lettuce in those tall towers. Um, I think that would be fun. We, I had a nice garden. It was doing pretty good this year. And then our youngest son lives in Vietnam and we went over there in July and they have a new baby. So, and we did stay um, a good while because it is so far and we don't get to see them and all that. But anyway, the point is, is that my garden um, kind of got done when I was done. Yes, please. I'm getting to where we are going. I don't have a quilting program on computer. Um, Sharon watched the New Year's Day one where I was not feeling well. Um, okay, we'll look for the September 2020. Thank you. I think it's 19. I think it's 2019. And I did it on Facebook, but Steve should have it in the, the webinar section. So just go to the teaching website. So here's a... Um, Let's see, um, the teaching website, squareinasquare.net, that's where all the teaching is at. That's where the free webinars are. That's where Quilt Club Week is. And that's where, of course, Premium Club is. And then the modules are in there and you click on them and then they open up and you have more choices and more choices and more choices. So love the tonal tones. Would you ever redo the classes for Letters to a Soldier? Um, I could, what are you looking for in a redo? Tell me what you're looking for in a redo. Um, that was like our first one. We've gotten so much better with technology and it's improved over the years. So I understand that part, but as far as the making of the quilt, what do you want to, what do you want to see? What do you want me to focus on? Oh, Linda, you were having a big party celebration. Yes. Well, um, we still have some of it. Contact Steve if you're wanting some of it. Uh, we can send it out if you want. I love the Pony Express fabric. Joined after that. The rich burgundies, browns, golds. Yes. I'm watching this fantastic session on my phone while we are traveling back to California. Well, we're getting to uh, pass the time with Laura as she goes from 
Tennessee to California. 2019, Linda, yes, I wasn't in square and square then, just easier to learn. So, Cindy, you're saying that you were not in square and square when we did the Letters to a Soldier, and so you just like them being live. Um, okay, all right. Well, let's press these, and if you have any last-minute questions or thoughts on anything, get it in there. And um, we're going to press these up. So this one is one right here that you can tell and the light might be better. So see how that um, my flying goose wasn't the two inches that I needed it to be. So the squares were, uh, I had enough fabric, they were fine, but this was a little bit skinny. So see how it's sewn on. This is like the sashing that we did in Farmer's Wife when the blocks were too small. And I was still able to get my fourth of an inch right there. I hope that makes sense of what we did. So I'm just pressing it, heating up those seams like we always do. And then see how I'm just coming in here and pressing. And then you just keep going. Now this one's got um, a little seam that flipped. I didn't have my finger on there, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to leave it. Everything's matching up nice, so there's no reason to go in and change it. It's on the back of the quilt, and it won't be a problem. So our retreat is going to be in April. Um, I, I think it goes like a Monday to a Thursday this year. It's not over a weekend. And... Um, I know the 17th of April is part of it. Um, I haven't looked at it to see exactly, but um, what would you, those of you that are interested in a retreat, what would you think would be fun to do? Um, we're be, now that Quick Club Week is over and the shipping has gotten controllable again, uh, we're looking ahead and forward to retreat of course we have all the sewing machines and stuff for those of you that fly we pick you up at the airport we do everything that we can to make it as easy as possible for you um, and of course you work on any project that you want to work on but we do have um, side classes and Kay and Kathy um, even Lisa Berger can show tips and hints um, Jenny and anything that you want to ship ahead or you want us to ship back for you, we can do that so that it's easier. And um, the facility is wonderful. It's really quiet and relaxing. So um, start thinking about that. Maybe you need to ask for um, Christmas. Maybe you want that to be your Christmas present. So, Laura, as you make that drive, what states do you go through? And I know you've done it multiple times. Um, you know, what are some places that you stop at that you really enjoy? Maybe there's certain food in a certain location or certain scenery. What do you see that you like? Now, I did have a lady that on a text yesterday or today she wanted to know about squaring up her block, and she's worried about her points, so I am going to do some of that. But um, um, Yes, Cindy, okay. So, Cindy, was the pink quilt yours, the pink and black and gray? Really like it. Okay, so what we have is we want to make sure that we have a fourth of an inch off of all of our points, and we want to trim up these extra little edges. Now, once again, I'm using the mini. I really, really love it. And first thing I do is I put a grid line on a seam, and I look for my points coming off. And this one has quite a bit that I can uh, trim off, actually, but you need to think about the overall so you kind of need to come in here and measure from flying goose to flying goose. This is right at six and a half. 
So I know I don't want to take anything off of my flying goose. Uh, this one is a little short this way. So I definitely, um, it's actually a fourth of an inch short this way, or I should say, um, um, what would part of a fourth of an inch be? Two, uh, maybe like a little bit more than an eighth. So what would that be? Like three sixteenths? It's like three sixteenths short. So actually when I put this to my next one, I will just do it like I did those corners that were, okay, and see this could be the issue here. It's a good thing that I didn't line that up and gave myself more room because it is it is short for whatever reason. And it's 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 enough that when I was doing my trimming, I should have caught it and separated it out. But I can get it to work when I sew my next pieces to it. I will just continue to move it over like I did on that and it'll give give me the the width that I need. So really when these are all cleaned up on this side, Really, the only thing you have to do is come in and do two sides. You really don't have to do all four sides. So I'm going to put a, a grid line here, and I'm going to go all the way to the edge. And make my cut. So really, all I had to do was trim off those extras from my strip. This one is a little wonky, but they're just, it'll work. They're so cute no matter what you do. Don't be so worried about the size and if it's square just worry about the the points and when they get ready to go into the quilt you can work with them pretty easily really into the blocks so i have 20 to make for the scrappy quilt and then i have 20 to make for the focus quilt. So I have 40 stars to make to be ready for Saturday morning. So Pamela, I'm thinking about your question about how to go from start to finish and uh, about changing sizes and all of that and just thinking about lesson plans and how that would be structured and so on. Um, I don't know that we necessarily would need it for the whole semester. Maybe it just needs to be a, a bonus class of how to do it. But um, also... Um, you know, if the sizing is what you need is normal sizing and it's on the chart, then you really don't need graph paper. Graph paper is good for at the beginning when you're trying to wrap your brain around just the whole concept of building a, a quilt on uh, paper. But um, um with um, Farmer's Life, where we learned the four patch and nine patch um, structure. Well, you know what? Okay, if we do, see how this sounds. If we do in January, each week we have a different block that we're doing, and we show you how to do it, and then we show you how to change sizes. That might would work. So each week would be a different block. It would be a different quilt. The blocks from each week do not necessarily go into a quilt unless you make them all do that. 
Um, what do you think about that? Okay, so here's my stars. One, two, three, four, five. So that's one block. Here's one, two, three, four, five. There's two blocks. And see how I stack them up opposite so that I can just look at them and see that there's the quantity. One, two. Now there are some different backgrounds in here, but you'll notice as I'm putting them down, they all blend together really nice. So there's three and there's four. So this one needs um, one more. So I'm just going to put him right there like that and my center oh what happened to my centers here they are and my center and then there will be one ready to go so i need one more um, stack for my scrappy quilt and then a whole nother grouping for the focus one so i'm going to check um, and see about questions and then we're going to be done For today, um, okay, so here's a good question. Um, let me see, let me back up a little bit. Um, thank you, Pamela, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, yes, pink is Cindy's, I love it. I can't wait to see the rest of it. Hi, Davey, good to see you on here. Uh, I have six and a half square that I use for squaring up these blocks. Yes, you can. Um, or you can use the corner square on the grande. Linda says, I just posted on Facebook the quilt I'm working on right now. I'm very excited about it, dying to get it um, on my quilt. I'm assuming you're saying machine. Let me see. Quilt frame. I've never done elaborate quilting it's going to be a new challenge. You will have fun, Linda, and you will know right away whether you love it or you don't love it. Okay, how do you keep your pieces that are a little short separate from the correct sizes as you put things away for the day? Wondering how you know what to do with all the pieces when you return to the project. Um, that's a good question, Becky. I just try to, over on my sewing table, I keep my pieces organized. I'll just, um, I need to do a little cleanup over there from this morning. And uh, if I need to put a sticky note with something, I will. Or if I need to put a pen in something, I will. And then my actual scraps, I have baskets and bins and um, all kinds of stuff. I can show you some of that here in just a minute. I'll move the camera. Um, bonus would be good, just the process, okay? I get the sizes. How do you start the creative side? Fabrics and process going forward or grafting a block. Okay, I'm going to make lots of stars on retreat next week. Very good. And Anita's here. Hi, Anita. I actually got to meet Anita at Paducah, I think. Did Is that where we met, Anita? Okay, I'm going to take you around my sewing room just a little bit, and um, I'm going to let you see kind of <laughs> the some of my madness. Okay, so since I have two big quilts that I'm working on, I um, my design wall has actually got January class on it, and I don't want to take it down. Um, so I've got my two big quilts on the floor. So, uh, and part of it, like the top part of it, is in the sewing studio area, and it is um, on the boards, and I'm not moving them back and forth. This is like the bottom section, which is the same as the top. So this is the scrappy one that I have through here. And then um, here is um, my books and magazines and stuff. Here is a um, stack of quilts that I've got all put together. So, um, this one is stuff I would use my patriotic fabrics for. Um, these are ideas for uh, paradise fabric. Um, this is I. This is like fall. This is like holiday. So I've got different drawings um, or pictures that I have here. Um, 
my bulletin board with different things. Um, he, this is all of my wool. I have my wool in these cabinets. And then these are kind of like Um, these are just kind of organized of my scraps or my end of bolts or something like that. And, uh, I've got some quilts here. I have, uh, fabric in this basket kind of organized into colors or style or whatever. These are stash that I have organized in colors and fabrics. I enjoy, um, all types of little sewing notions and displays and stuff. I think my other job is a decorator. Just different things I've found over the years at different shows I've been to. And then this um, is like a big board. This is like Tracy's Tables, and so you buy the tower and the board and the other tower, and there's different choices of towers. And then this is just those elf, or I think that's what they called, that just fits under there. And these are, uh, you know, you can just kind of build it all the way you want it and just have different stuff in there. Um, and then this is one of those wool mats that covers my whole thing. I love it. This is what I actually had my camera in. It was sitting right here in this little uh, area so that you could see down there what I was doing. I don't have a lot of rulers that I use, so all of my rulers fit on there. Just my little basket of pencils and scissors and goodies I need. These are scrap fabrics that I'm working with uh, in the scrap quilt. Here is the focus quilt. Um, this little area here with the TV. This is an old book from mid 1800s. It has a lot of pictures in it. Uh, and some of those pictures I use when I do my Civil War fabric. And then just uh, when I'm working on quilts, especially two of them like this, I just have stuff everywhere. And um, that is the quilt a uh, magazine that had my Abe Lincoln quilt in it when um, I did the Abe Lincoln fabric line for his um, 200th birthday. And then this is just one of my extra sewing machines. This is my cover quilt. I showed it, um, I think, during Quilt Club Week and told the story about it and how it got to be on the cover of McCall's Quilting and then my first book and ruler, one of my boys framed that up for me and gave it to me a long, long time ago. Okay, don't get sick as we move around. And um, this is an old grocery store shopping basket and I just have my different scraps in it. I have all of these baskets are organized with different things. Uh, let's see. Um, some quilts I don't recall seeing. Yeah, those um, those on the wall are all antique quilts, except for one. And well, no, the middle one is an antique one. The other two I made. Um, and then I want to show you here in the hallway when we go out the door. So these are the shadow vintage on the rolls. And so when I want to work on one of those, I just pull it off the roll. And this one was a Quilters Magazine. Oh, I don't know. That was probably 25 years ago on that one. This one is Quilt Mania. That's my quilt on the cover of Quilt Mania. And this one, that's the Gold Rush quilt. And this one of Quilt Mania, that's my Thomas Log Cabin. And this was made with the Pony Express of the Abe Lincoln fabric. Really like it. And then the staircase down. And this one is um, 
one of the quick quilts. A lot of these magazines I don't even make anymore. I don't know what year this was, but this is um, some of Maylie's, Maylie's picture. So early 2000. And then this one here was uh, another magazine. It was just called Quilts. And it was January of 08. There. That's Indian Blanket. I love it. This one was Bear Paw with the Diamond in it. Really a pretty quilt. Okay, now that I took you out the door, now let's go back around. So, um, have fabric in baskets there and fabric there. This has um, some wool stuff in it and some threads. Another one of my cabinets with different stuff in it. Um, and threads over here. And then here is, I have two extra little tables up um, with the fabrics I'm working on for the focus quilt. Um, that tower back there has got fabric I use for design. A lot of this is my, my handwork, my applique, and I love this little, um, this cute little cabinet. I bought it online with all of my pearl cottons in it. I don't get to do my handwork as much as I would like. And then this is my applique stuff. Um, that is Megan's book. And this is all of um, a lot of different ideas with the trumpet block. I love these blocks. Look how that kind of like a Christmas ornament. And look at that border, how it goes. Just great. Okay. And then in all of these little baskets and bins, these are all strips that are a certain width in there. These are different UFOs or projects that I have. Um, this basket has all teaching stuff in it. It's all organized in uh, files and bags. And then that one just has fabrics in it. These are some newer fabrics that I bought on a shop pop that I haven't used. Um, and then just different ideas here, things that I wanna teach or show or an idea or color placement. Um, just certain fabrics here. Here's a bunch of little trim offs. So maybe you're talking about some of these little scraps like this, how I just have them all organized down in there so I can use those. And some of these are definitely big enough for these stars we're working on. So I need to get it out and use up some of those. These are some wider strips. These are those trays that you get like a, what do they call it? Tabasco basket at, um, Hobby Lobby, and I like to use those. Um, and then these are files with pictures of quilts. And here, my hole punch for my books. But see how these just, uh, see how these just lay together and fit together so nice. And so you can have different projects and different strips in there. So that's it. I'm going to tell you guys bye for now. Thank you so much for watching. Um, let me check your questions here. More Civil War fabric. And you know, Sharon, a lot of fabric companies are not doing Civil War fabrics anymore because of all of the, uh, just the wokeness that's going on. Sharon's got the magazine Pink Quilt in the Shadows. Love, love it. Wall hanging. Yes, I love that one. Did you sell Longer Burger at one time? My aunt did, and I have. No, I didn't sell it, but I had several good friends that did, and I loved them, and so I have them. Love the quilt with the stars and flying geese on top of the cabinet by the baskets. I think you said it was an idea. Flying geese in a basket. You know how many flying geese in baskets are in this room? Uh, let me look around. Flying geese in a basket. Hmm. Oh, well. So there it is, guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye for now.